Welcome to episode 15. Today, we're gonna to take on a posture of peace by celebrating. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lindsay Van Zale. Posture is a podcast that serves as a short, audible fist pump to remind you that God is in everything. Together, we're gonna to be emboldened to take a daily posture of perfect peace. Well, if you're watching this episode, you can tell already by my surroundings that this episode is a bit unconventional. We actually just finished up celebrating a family birthday dinner for three of some of my most favorite people, my brother and two of my sister-in-loves. They all share March birthdays. And I thought, you know, while everything was still out, this was the perfect setting to share all about the message that's been on my heart this week, which is celebration. You know, I... I learned about celebration, really the importance about celebration, only a couple years ago. And it was at a wedding of all places. I was at my friend's wedding and it was just a beautiful wedding from start to finish. And we were at the reception and, you know, the food was amazing and the dancing was fun and the music was great and people were just really enjoying themselves. And as the night progressed, you know, the volume in the venue got louder. I'm sure you've been to those some of those parties or receptions where it's like everyone's just having such a good time. We're basically yelling at the person across the table from us so they can hear us over the music. But there's just such joy and so much celebration at one place that the volume just begins to rise. And it was in that moment that I felt the Lord, you know, tap me on the shoulder and whisper this to me. He said, Linz, you think that all of this is extra, but I have deemed it essential. And of course, he wasn't talking about, you know, the style of the wedding or, you know, the type of food or the budget or anything like that. What he was talking to me about was the atmosphere of celebration. And I'm I'm learning ever since then how to exercise the immense power and the divine privilege of celebration in my life. You know, the bottom line is that celebration is not an invention by humans. It is an intention of God for us. And we see proof of this all throughout scripture, you know, starting in the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 23, where God ordains these old covenant feasts for his people. And he leads them in celebrating, you know, milestones of past breakthrough while also prophesying future promise. And then there's this amazing story in Second Chronicles verse, um, I'm sorry, chapter 20, where the nation of Judah is, you know, basically being threatened and has to go to war up against like these three seemingly impossible to defeat nations. It is like, it is not a good time. But what do they do? At the forefront, before the warriors, before the fighters, they place people of praise and celebration to sing this war cry, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And then in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 32, there is this amazing picture of what spiritual warfare partnered with God looks like in our life. It says, and and, and this is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 32, but you will have a joyous song throughout the night as one celebrating to the sound of a flute and dancing up the mountain of Yahweh. Every stroke the Lord lays on your enemy with his punishing club will be to the sound of cymbals and strumming harps as he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm. In other words, God fights, we celebrate. Isn't that amazing? You know, in a broken world like ours, It's really easy to categorize things like human flourishing and celebration as just extras. You know, even in some spiritual circles, we look at things like human flourishing as unnecessary and even ungodly. And so what I've what's happened is I've watched as believers have slowly stepped back from the relief that embraces, you know, the prosperity and the extravagance of God. And they backed off of the belief that God is, you know, our provider, not just of our spiritual welfare, but also our physical well-being, that God is healer, you know, not just of spiritual sickness, but of physical sickness as well. And, you know, ultimately what what's happening is, you know, I'm seeing a generation of Christians who are struggling to not just believe that God is love and not just believe that God is powerful, 
but they're struggling to believe that God is good. And so we're finding ourselves in a time and place where people, even Christians, are looking outside of God's will and his way for things like love and empowerment and fun and peace. But I just can't shake John 10.10, where Jesus tells us that it's the thief who comes to steal and kill and destroy. But it's I, Jesus said, it's me who came to give you abundant life. You know, you and I, we have an enemy who hates us and wants to deplete us and destroy us. But we have a savior who loves us and wants to see us flourish. And so it's really important that we never confuse the two. You know, if you're in a time right now where you're experiencing loss or destruction or the threat of ruin of any kind, just remember that that is not God's will for you. It is not his plan. And it most certainly is not your permanent lot in life. If it doesn't scream of abundance, it's not from Jesus. So why should we celebrate even when life is hard? Well, celebration is agreement. Celebration is a form of thanksgiving. When we choose to celebrate, when we choose to make room in our lives for celebration, when we choose to go to the party or throw the party or cheer on a friend or clap our hands or laugh, even especially in the middle of difficulty, we are aligning ourselves with heaven and we are sending a message to our enemy. You can't touch me. You know, I talked um, yesterday about emptying Satan's hands. Do you want to empty Satan's hands today? Celebrate. The promise of perfect peace is found in Isaiah 26.3. And in Hebrew, it is shalom, shalom, meaning complete wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. This is who you are in Jesus. Let's declare this together. Today, I am kept in perfect peace. With my whole heart, I trust the Lord. I am strong, I am victorious, I am whole. Remember friend, you are a living testimony of Jesus' ultimate win. Not because of anything you did, but because of what he did for you. With every step you take today, you're putting Jesus' victory on display and Satan's defeat on replay.